This is scooping, the maneuver that allows water to be loaded on board this type of water bomber called the Canadair CL215. This version and the new version, the Bombardier CL415, are conceived to work in extremely difficult conditions, including very low speeds. In fact, if you look at it flying, it looks almost as if it's traveling in slow motion. This allows it to get very close to the terrain and drop bombs of water on fires. Welcome to another breadcrumb video. Today, we'll look at how a typical water bomber, the Canadair CL215, works. The Canadair is by no means the only water bomber aircraft, but it's one of the few water bombers that was specifically designed for firefighting. Historically, most other firefighting aircraft were adapted versions of aircraft designed for another use. They are either readapted cargo freighters, military anti submarine planes, military transport planes, agricultural planes, helicopter, or passenger planes, such as the 747 Super Tanker, which was designed for passenger transport, but its firefighting variant makes it the biggest water bomber ever built. Most of the early firefighter aircraft were able to drop only very small amounts of water, so Canadair was contracted in the 1960s to design a plane specifically to fight fires, the CL215, which was then modernized in the 1990s by Bombardier with the CL415, and again in 2020 by Viking Air with a new avionics system, engines, and more. The Canadair is not a seaplane, but an amphibious aircraft capable of landing and taking off from both water and land compared to seaplanes that are only capable of landing and taking off from water. Its amphibious capability is possible thanks to the shape of its fuselage. If we observe it from the front, we can observe that it is very similar to the keel of a boat. And it's exactly this shape, together with a float for each wing, that it is able to stay afloat and scoop water that's needed to extinguish the fire. But how is the water loaded on board? And also, where is it stored? The maneuver is called scooping, and this can happen at sea or on lakes. So what happens is the pilots lower the flaps and the airplane decelerates down to about 70 knots to touch down on the surface of the water. Just before touching the water, the probes open, taking on water to fill the tanks. They are surprisingly small, but can fill two 6,140 liter tanks in about 12 seconds at about 410 meters due to the impact speed of the plane. Its enormous wing then allows it to take off again at a low speed of 80 knots. The CL415's ability to fly low speed is in fact due to the length of its wing, which is almost 30 meters long, about as long as the Boeing 737's wing, a short-haul commercial airliner. But despite its size, the aircraft was engineered to fly like a much smaller plane. It is nimble because of its supersized flight control surfaces. For example, the rudder is larger than the one of the 737, even though the Boeing is a bit taller and double the length. What happens next, once the water is scooped up, is that the pilots get closer to the fire to evaluate the situation, and they need to observe a few things to understand where the fire is headed. Wendover Production talked about this in one of his videos. But their priority is to slow it down as much as possible. There are four major factors that affect how fast a fire moves. How much fuel there is, how wet the fuel is, the wind direction, and the slope. The two factors that the team can immediately gauge that affect where the fire will move fastest are the wind direction and slope. In this case, the wind is coming from the north, and they know that to the southwest is an upward slope. Fire moves faster uphill than it does downhill since the fire burns upwards, so these smoke jumpers know that this is likely the fire's fastest moving front. Once the fire's fastest moving front has been observed, the pilots will align the plane with the front line of the fire. If the fire is small, the super scooper flies down to a height of about 100 feet above the flame with a speed of about 110 knots, and it drops a 6-ton payload in about 2 seconds. The precision required for this kind of operation can be quite high, as the blast from the amount of water at those speeds can harm firefighters, damage vehicles and equipment on the ground. But why do they fly so low? Well, that's because if the water were to be dropped from higher up, some of it would vaporize. Small droplets of rain would land on the fire, and the firefighting effectiveness would be reduced. In fact, the peculiarity of this aircraft is exactly that. While the 747 Super Tanker and the DC-10 can drop water from 800 and 300 feet respectively, the Canadair is able to fly at very low altitudes, and drop as much water as possible on the source of fire. But what if the fire is a massive wildfire? Things change a bit here because the temperatures can reach above 1,000 degrees Celsius, and the water can't be dropped directly above the fire. 
and even if it could, it wouldn't be very effective. And this is where the fire retardant foams come into play. The water bomber can be loaded with fire retardant on the ground, which can be then dropped on the fire to fight it. But because of its properties, it is able to fall through the smoke and reach the base of the fire, creating a fireproof area which slows down the fire and eventually stops it. The Canadair series of water bombers is unquestionably the best aerial firefighter in the world. As compared with other aircraft flying similar missions, it stands in a class of its own. Letting aside its good aerodynamics, the low drop altitude and the fact that it can refill on water surfaces rather than landing back to an airport, the Canadair has another great advantage. In a single day's work, a helicopter can do 49 drops totaling 185,000 liters. Land-based aircraft could do around 15 drops totaling 200,000 liters and the mighty DC-10 could do 8 drops totaling 300,000 liters. The CL-215 on the other hand could perform 115 drops totaling an incredible 690,000 liters of water. With performance like this, the CL-215 series aircraft will continue to fly in our skies and fight fires from above for years to come.